Previously on The Way We Did It, we took the lance to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. We were now heading to Granby, Colorado for a week-long experiment to see what it was like to live and work out of the lance. As the wildfires on the West Coast worsened, so did the air quality in Colorado. For most of the summer in 2021, smoky skies were the norm. This, compounded with the recent spike in COVID-19 numbers, got Dave and I looking for an escape. We found refuge in the town of Granby. It's tucked away in the Rocky Mountains, outside of the massive smoke plume currently blanketing the plains. We decided to take our longest trip yet in the Lance, booking an entire week at an RV resort near town. We wanted to test out what it was like to work out of the truck camper, because if this was possible, it would open up more destinations farther away from home. But first, some housekeeping. We mentioned in a previous video that we get Wi-Fi through our Netgear hotspot. Since it's dependent on cell service, we decided to purchase an RV WeBoost to ensure we would be able to work the entire week in Granby. The WeBoost is basically an antenna that boosts cell signal. Dave installed it on the roof of the Lance and ran the cable through the refrigerator vent, connecting it to the booster in an outlet in the bedroom. We then placed the inside antenna on the top step near the dinette, where we were likely going to be working. Another upgrade we made before leaving for Granby was installing a light bar. Ever since our unexpected detour around the mudslide on I-70, we didn't want to get caught on another unlit backcountry road without having more light. We wanted the light bar to be functional and have a low profile, so we purchased one that seamlessly fit into the grill of the truck. Not only was it easy to install, but now one of the many switches inside the truck finally had a purpose. Here's a demonstration of what it looks like at night. These are the regular headlights, the brights, and the light bar. Needless to say, we felt much more prepared for driving at night. We were now ready to hit the road. Since we left on a Sunday, we were luckily traveling in the opposite direction of traffic. This is just a small clip of the extremely long line of cars and campers trying to get back home after their weekend fun in the mountains. We took the windy road up and over Berthed Pass before finally arriving to Granby. Granby is a small mountain town with a population of just over 2,000 people and sits at roughly 8,000 feet above sea level. Now, let's check out the campground. We were staying at the River Run RV Resort. This was by far the most luxurious campground we've ever been to. Right away, we passed a giant dog run and hiking trails. In the center of the property was a large swimming pool right next to a lounge and restaurant. It also had a gym, a general store with camping staples and souvenirs, a bocce ball court, mini golf course, a large playground with an inflatable jumping pad, volleyball, 
tennis, and basketball courts. A gaga ball pit. A gemstone panning station. An arcade conveniently located next to a bar for the parents. And I kid you not, a bowling alley. We booked a standard back in sight with full hookups. And unlike other RV resorts that pack in campers like sardines, the site was extremely spacious. It had a picnic table and fire pit, which unfortunately we couldn't use due to the county's fire ban. And if that wasn't enough, there were also premium RV sites equipped with a gas grill, a mini fridge, and dining table all overlooking the lake. In addition to RV sites, you can rent small cabins, an Airstream, or a wagon, which were actually pretty dang nice on the inside. There was also a separate section for tent camping with wagons to help carry your gear to and from your car. And if you find yourself never wanting to leave, the campground is actually part of a larger community that is currently building a neighborhood of vacation homes. Our week looked a lot like this. I worked inside at the dinette with mountain views outside every window. Dave had his work set up outside on the picnic table. And thanks to our new WeBoost, we had great cell service with uninterrupted Wi-Fi. We enjoyed most of our meals outside taking full advantage of the mountain views and the beautiful evening skies. But there were also some nights inside the camper to catch up on disc golf. A few days into the week, we actually switched campsites. The first one was in its own separate loop and was pretty isolated from all the amenities. Our new site was more centrally located. So during our lunch breaks, we were able to go on leisurely walks around the property. We also discovered how terrible we were at basketball. And how awesome I was at cornhole. We even treated ourselves to a quick lunch at the bar. Dave was excited to go fishing during the week since part of the Colorado River runs through the back of the campground. But we later discovered that Granby has a unique permit system to fish their gold medal waters. The river is divided into sections called beats, and you have to purchase a permit for a specific beat and only fish within that boundary. And on top of that, the fees were a little pricey, so we just admired the river instead. A 
along with the beautiful scenery, we were enjoying the amazing weather and good air quality. Down near the foothills and plains, we had to limit outdoor activities for much of the summer because the smoke from the wildfires out west was so bad. So you can imagine how we felt just to be outside again. There was one day during the week when large ominous clouds rolled in, bringing rain, lightning, and strong winds that shook the camper the entire night. But the next morning, the storm left behind a rainbow, sunlight beaming over the mountains, and apparently snow on Berthid Pass which is a bit unusual for the middle of August. Every day after work, we packed up the lance and went on evening adventures. To give us more time to explore, Dave and I actually created a game of how fast we could pack up the camper, proudly hitting about 12 minutes each time. Our first outing was to Monarch Lake, to get there, we took a dirt road that followed the lower perimeter of Lake Granby, where they were pretty serious about the speed limit. Something we weren't expecting to see was such a large number of osprey nests. We later learned that Granby has the largest breeding population of osprey in the region. And to protect these birds from dangerous power lines, the town worked with Colorado's Parks and Wildlife to build platforms for them to safely nest on. As we closed in on the trail, the road got a bit bumpy. but we eventually made it to the parking lot and took the short path to Monarch Lake. As the sun began to set, it cast a warm glow over the mountains, which was our cue to start heading back to camp, but not before pulling over at every scenic overlook. Our second outing was to Adams Falls, located on the east end of Grand Lake. It was an easy half mile loop through a mixed forest of pine, juniper, and aspen trees. The waterfall cascades over 50 feet, funneling into a narrow rock gorge below.
As Dave and I were taking the loop back around, we stumbled upon a little oasis tucked away in the forest. A small rock dam created this inviting and serene pool. spent some time wandering around before returning to the trail and getting back to the campground. Our third outing was to Cottonwood Pass. In the 1800s, it was the main stagecoach route to the nearby town of Hot Sulphur Springs, until 1905 when the railroad finally reached it. It's now a scenic route through horse pastures and private ranches, with views of the lush forest landscape and surrounding mountains. fourth outing was to the Willow Creek Reservoir. It captures snowmelt runoff and diverts it to the Colorado River and Lake Granby. It's also a great recreational site for fishing. As we approached the west side of the reservoir, we started to see damage from 2020's wildfire. While it was sad to see the destruction, it was comforting to see the plant life already bouncing back. And through the healing landscape, we also saw more osprey platforms, including one with two parents and their baby, who was gaining the courage to fly. and we loved hearing the parents calling out to make sure it landed safely. We continued driving down the road following the devastating path of the East Troublesome wildfire. In October of 2020, a fire was reported in the Arapaho National Forest. And due to the dry, windy conditions, it continued to spread thousands of acres a day. It was the second largest fire in Colorado's history, at over 193,000 acres. The fire claimed two lives and hundreds of homes, and the burnt scar is still prone to increased erosion, prompting flash flooding and debris mudslides in the surrounding area. This is why the county is under a strict fire ban, going as far as prohibiting the sale of barbecue materials at local grocery stores. 
It's hard to describe how we felt seeing the fire's aftermath in person. But after our stay in Granby, it was heartwarming to see the resilience of the community and how everyone came together to support those in need. It was our last day in Granby. We decided to treat ourselves to breakfast at Bighorn Bagels. It's a family-run business that sells authentic East Coast bagels, flying them in straight from New York City. Fueled up and ready to go, we set out on our last adventure. We had a loose plan of driving west until we hit the town of Kremling then jumping on a scenic back road that follows the Colorado River in hopes of finding a secret local hot spring. We discovered that the dirt road following the Colorado River was actually a rafting paradise, with rest areas for rafters along the way. Unfortunately, this was the road that led to the hot spring. It was in pretty rough shape and got worse down the way. But that didn't stop Dave from trying to convince me we could make it. We cannot make it through this. What? You have one bump here. Oh my god. You have right here. <laughs> Just one bump right there. I don't know what happens around the corner. Uh-uh. I still didn't want to risk it, so we passed on the hot spring to see what we could find down the road. But Dave, to this day, still thinks we would have made it.
You think they're gonna make it? Well, I think they'll make it. Yeah. Sure. We'll root for them. Let's root for them. <laughs> As our time in Granby came to an end, we thought about how fortunate we were to be able to take this trip with our Lance. That no matter where we were, it still somehow felt like home. Next time on The Way We Did It. We are going to Colorado Springs, where we explore an abandoned mining camp, fished gold metal waters, and made an adorable new friend. If you'd like to join us on more adventures, be sure to like this video and click that subscribe button. Or for extra perks like your name in the end credits and travel guides to places in our videos, consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to show you the way we did it.